Greetings, everyone. Thank you for taking time to join the training session with us today to learn about Teleport. Please refer to our code of conduct for the day. Feel free to ask any questions in the chat or Q&A as we do the session, and I will do my best to answer all them. I'm Nivedan, an implementing engineer at Teleport, and I'll be driving this presentation today. It's with. Let's start with a quick uh, agenda. So, uh, look at some of the features are uh, like just in time access request, machine ID, Terraform provider, MFA, and uh, how to join the moderator and the trust and pinning automated updates. And at last, and cover some of the security practices, uh, like how to reduce the blast radius uh, in terms of attack and uh, vulnerabilities, etc. And we covered some uh, Q and A questions. Let's start with uh, teleport just in time access request allows you. Uh, uh, to uh, request for resource or so you can use for both uh, role and also uh, and those the request can be either be uh, approved and denied uh, by admin or security where is our privileges and th this can be done uh, both from uh, CLI and also uh, from web UI so it's considered as uh, if there is a PRO incident and one of your engineer wants to uh, an elected to uh, uh, to jump on a, a production host and debug some of the issues over there and he have those uh, uh, those pages by default so leverage this uh, just in time access request uh, feature from teleport to uh, ask for a role or Source access and then uh, there an a security engineer can uh, review the request and uh, uh, if you can and uh, yeah, and then they, they can run that issue and um, fix that short time of time in a short period of how does this work? Uh, teleport act was completely based on, on what are sent for use decides whether they can assign for a role or a resource and again on the at the review over uh, denies the role is again based on the roles like if they are assigned with the role that you can see that uh, like uh, if you have the privileges review those roles that's an interesting piece teleport uh in all your day-to-day -day workflow uh, uh, items, Slack, G, Matmos, PayDuty, Microsoft Teams, Scott, Mail, and also you can build your own custom plugin our SDK. So you can integrate the request plugin with all uh, tools. You can uh, more requests come in and uh, you, you get more proactive on that. The name is machine ID. So machine ID is a set that programmatically issues and, and renews short-lived uh, uh, to any service account, like, like the system and your Ansible systems uh, and a Terraform system. So every you can run this machine ID, which is a, a binary called Tbot. Once you run it, uh, the teleport uh, it connects to the teleport always and it may, uh, it gets the credentials, the short list certificates uh, for uh, accessing any of the target missions, like our database, Kubernetes application, and all the port API. Yeah. So yeah, here is how it works. So your machine as an agent uh, sits in one of your CI, CD, or our microservice. Which access to uh, your uh, resources like data, database, Kubernetes clusters, uh, and machine aid takes that of, uh, 
takes care of like um, renewing the certificates and uh, uh, issuing a certificate and then that helps these workers to this one and uh, it connects and support enables this to your, your end users. And here are some of the uh, use cases. Uh, you can run uh, machine ID on a server which runs Ansible playbooks to connect to the uh, nodes and you can uh, connect to the your machine this is, uh, uh, without any credential and you can have, have a CICD system connected to your servers and Kubernetes clusters uh, and also you can dedicate uh, uh, access to uh, cluster itself uh, if you want to like Terraform Audition on uh, our Telem cluster, which are in, in our next class. Uh, and also, so to Terraform gain access to your server, Kubernetes, you can use me. So, the next one is our Terraform provider. So, Terraform provider let a Teleport administrator to use uh, all the uh, infrastructure as a code and get to manage projects. For example, uh, if you want to create a role, you don't go on uh, on a on a web UI and make those models over there and uh, make multiple clicks. You can uh, use uh, already a Terraform uh, uh, infrastructure and use a uh, right Terraform code or Terraform resources like teleport bot, uh, connector, role, user, and etc. So you can uh, write a configuration and you can run Terraform and teleport so that you don't need to uh, click around on web. You are do a bunch of things, everything committed. As I said before, uh, you can use machine ID to run Terraform on the portal. You can uh, use have machine ID on your CCD systems where to run uh, uh, from and on the CSCD node, you, you run the T-Bot server and which takes care of renewing a certificate and so that you can easily run Terraform on Teleport cluster which gives you access. Next, a uh, uh, security topic, a security feature, which is factor authentication. It supports with MFA authentications, like second factor authentication and passwordless, uh, a teleport can integrate with web uh, session fee. At, let's go one by one. Uh, second factor authentications. Say you, you are not using any uh, um, SSO providers, you're more strictly towards your local users. You can uh, use uh, any second factor authentication out of your configuration and you can uh, use second part authentication authenticator of you and make sure everyone installs this app on their mobile phone or on their laptop and use those factor authentication to log into teleport systems teleports with web and second for authentication so, uh, WebBot can be uh, used to log into Teleport for logging in individual SSH nodes and also Kubernetes clusters. So, it's, uh, 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 hardware like YubiKeys, uh, SoloKeys, and uh, Touch ID on your Mac machine and Windows Hello for your uh, uh, machines as well. You can uh, as factor authentication for logging into Teleport. Here comes our uh, one of the best feature of teleport, which was less. Uh, so yeah, teleport, uh, uh, when used, teleport, you can also take advantage of uh, password less, and, and uh, it it again uses web uh, to uh, uh, to to give you a password less feature and uh, teleport. Uh, Button and uh, whenever on logins, to, uh, they can uh, log without word. Uh, typically, have to use either the 
their keys, touch ID on their Mac. Uh, basically, this proves their identity and which is more sure than using passwords or any other kinds of threats. First, MFA. So, this elements uh, uh, to another uh, step. Uh, so, here you can for an MFA of every session whenever a user logs into a server, a Kubernetes cluster, a database, or a Windows machine. So, so uh, say a user has already logged in and they wanted uh, to check whether the same person logged again uh, to in, uh, on a set, uh, uh, he logged in whenever he wants to get into. So, we per session MFA. This as a level of uh, the infrastructure uh, actually when it's a critical infrastructure and uh, this, this helps uh, in very uh, uh, protected environments uh, more, uh, uh, more where the critical workloads are so i can take advantage of this then next is moderated sense so moderated session can allow support administrator to define some requirements for users spent on a server or a Kubernetes. The moderator gives the user the following entities like observing session. Say there is a cell infrastructure and some needs to be present uh, when someone is working on the session to be updated for more for auditing. And say it needs to be present on session uh, just um, seeing what's going on and uh more like a pet programming and uh if they if they find something uh unusual by the when whenever that person is working on it they can turn it this that's the third step. so they can join modes as you can just screen like one is observer mode the second one is moderate and the third peer so observer and hope operations are but they can see what's happening over there. And as a moderator, they can see all the uh, output and uh, also they can terminate the session if something uh, is good happening in them. Say they can, who is using the mission is not, uh, is not uh, doing anything good or if, if he is uh, doing some vulnerable activities, they can uh, terminate that session. And as a peer, you can see uh, output like what what the other the other person is doing, and so you can add and like you can uh, work on the same session. This is more useful in like pair programming session, like when someone wants to join the same session and wanted to debug on something. Then this peer is super useful. How does it work? So, once again, takes use of our back policies to allow for fine grain control over who can access it and who is required to be pressed to start one. This is this, this is on the back configuration. He is required to join like, like that. Uh, that is uh, uh, that this is required sets uh, uh, conditions on uh, uh, sessions uh, basically how many uh auditor moderator should be joining this session so only join and one was required the session be initiated for right say i'm i'm i'm, I'm a, uh an engineer wants to join a session uh but using this role access and i, I initiate only if an auditor or any other um, uh, person who, who can moderate the session wants to uh, join to be able to get in and that make sure someone to be from the auditing teams to be joined like never i am on a production uh, server uh, debugging thing or working on Next feature is device trust. So device trust leverages dedicated secure hardware in devices to store credentials. 
So device consists of uh, two phases like device and handling the device. So let me tell you how this works. So device is basically you set uh, um, the machine or this laptop is trusted uh, and then add those devices to teleport. So then one from those days you can uh, access all your resources i mean uh through the teleport so so that uh distrust is due and you can add the device by you can see to run that for coes and once it's added the inventory uh, and it also helps to manage the inventory as well yeah and uh, uh you can enroll those by running the uh, command and you token and once the token is generated and it on here so that it gets rolled to the cluster so how do you uh, uh enforce so you can enforce this uh by two ways one is set it on your cluster auth preference uh you can, um, uh, you can edit the file and you can add those uh, devices to be required uh, uh, as a mandate and these everywhere like everybody to uh, trust should log into tell so that is something uh one and number two, two is, uh, you can do a poll like for this example role, like say i'm uh i'm, I'm an uh, engineer and i have this role so uh i have a device trust mode uh, every time uh, I log it, it share that I'm using uh, the device trust, trusted device on now. Also, you can enroll uh, device trust automatically. Like all you have to do is uh, you can set your uh, cluster audience, uh, to auto to true and, and also can integrate your asset management or attachment tool. Some for, uh, to add all the devices, uh, uh, you can find documentations around it. Uh, if anyone uh, needs that, I can set uh, after this webinar. Next uh, security feature is IP. So IP is a security feature that has to protect against not the right access by ensuring that teleport users can. And only access resources from the address they use during the login access. This is the risk of operations being used for different locations. I, I'm, I'm working on this, and, and if I am uh, logged in from this one uh, on, on RP, I wanted to put in the same, maybe like say, initials from laptop being stolen in. Uh, are uh, sent to somewhere else, it doesn't work. So this, that is the main fear here. Like we tried the IP, uh, we called it observed IP. Like we see uh, the first IP, IP that comes, uh, that makes the request and along with the pin type, whatever the IP, uh, getting the certificates, getting the sense like where I looked in. That's because the IP pin down with certain how does it work again uh, ip pinning works uh, with roles like you have to enforce the, the spin for ip uh, to true on all your roles or those that is required have this uh, ip pin say you have like a collegiate worker and you wanted to make sure they uh, they are not from your office and work uh, where else and wanted to make sure they they uh, are not uh, stolen, so uh, you you can post that on them or or a certain group of uh, uh, users uh, or a certain group of uh, uh, organized say, uh, who access critical. So those uh, privileges. So so with the security level over there, sure, it is highly secure. Next feature uh, is uh, automatic updates. So, on telephone, uh, updates are handled by 
in the cloud itself. Like you don't need to uh, update anything there. Uh, it'll uh, teleport uh, the teleport uh, servers, uh, both the proxy and everything will be graded uh, on the scale uh, of a teleport team. Uh, the only agents uh, on your place has to be updated. And how it can be updated? There is like car binary, like a teleport and uh, update that you can uh, set up on the um, uh, right next to your agent. And that binary can put manual and automatic updates. So uh, I can again uh, send you uh, some uh, documentation on this. Uh, if this if this, this is working for definitely this is a, a very 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 super useful feature to take it off. Uh, I'm going. I'm, I'm go definitely going to point out uh, to your audience after this one. Okay. Now we have switched to uh, our last implement uh, before webinar, uh, which is uh, tracing the plus radius. So uh, this is this particular uh, segment of this session is main. Uh, to uh, show uh, how and your uh, your roles getting compromised and your and and make, uh, taking advantage of all the teleport practices uh, to ensure you are in error and it is uh, um, make sure uh, you, you are making your security more robust as possible. So. These are some of uh, the, the items that you can use. Um, and uh, these are the items that we are going to cover. So making them of a mandatory message login. And the second was uh, a challenge for every time. So I have already seen, but I'm going to cover how we are going to do it. So it's basically a process in favor of the login and the third was a uh, uh, record do a lot authorization for request and automatically prevent someone uh roles for rush and uh restrict re role request based on user tries and set up your are back with make a muff entry for it so uh, you have to ma make it mandatory, like uh, by you can set on uh, on your uh, teleport cloud cluster. You can set it on like cloud friends and make sure the factor that mandatory. Here I have a uh, uh, that you can select for web button or if you want to use keys and more of like password. Uh, authentication, you can definitely uh, take advantage of authentication and uh, your touch ID so you be keys. So, uh, like, uh, make sure you have the set your uh, clusters that uh, you, you can um, elevate a uh, uh, game over there. And uh, present a challenge for every two access resource. So, so oh, this again, you can set it on your cluster or preference. Uh, so when a user logs in to uh, a mission and uh, he are staying to start a session in our, on a server or a Kubernetes cluster, they will be uh, prompted with an uh, MF challenge uh, to make sure the same log into the mission, and, uh, not someone else. This one required dual authorization for role request. So you can see uh, these get by role. These are the two roles on the end. Uh, you can see uh, the real uh, and uh, for these and for, for, for the reviewer who is reviewing the, the cluster uh, should have these uh, are request these roles and they review with uh, so basically uh, and they see like how many people uh, have to um, and uh, can basically whenever 
uh, approval of the roles access roles can be approved the the person the, the, uh, like two persons with your role approves your request so basically so whenever i am trying to request for role uh, um, for, for any of the, uh, i need to up with some so that makes sure uh, it's not and then accidentally like uh, there are like two people uh, seeing that and make sure uh, it it's a legit uh, access request and they can approve it and automatically prevent some from uh, requesting access um, so uh, you you can prevent like miss user request by defining roles that prohibit users from even request a role, particular role, like uh, that you can set it and uh, you have the roles, Xbox roles, and when yeah, that's something you can do, uh, like uh, consider when you're uh, uh, architecting your RPEC uh, on teleport. Rest role, uh, replace, right? Say, uh, you, your lark from a group or you have a username, uh, and you want to program a username, uh, that's when, uh, say they have given a role pledges, but wanted to block for certain trades, like if they would set a group, if they build to as a username. So, so you wanted to uh, not to give access uh, on that. Like, say someone has access, you would not have some, some, a, a whole group access, but uh, you wanted to restrict access or a subset of them. Then you can make, make trades. Uh, and, and this is also a sort of cool feature uh, that you can consider while architecting your R back. So we are at our end of the session. Uh, so. Uh, for uh, go to Q &A, I just want to cover uh, what's going to be there in our next session. So we are going to show the end migration strategy, uh, session recording, and enhanced session recording, uh, audit logging, uh, audit logging, exporting uh, with fluent, some basic troubleshooting workflow on common scenarios, and when to engage uh, for an accounts team. Email with tele um, and you can add some clusters update page uh, to make um, the, uh, how the cl uh, teleport cloud is being and if you're seeing any dark time you can see it over there and also uh, you can uh, will be clicking how uh, review uh, our upcoming roadmap so that you can see the feature going to get added in next months and so on. Questions.